Good morning and welcome to the very latest uh, Global Sources live sourcing talk. And today we have a brand new episode of Supplier Stories. And today's topic is, as you can see on the banner below me, sourcing and logistics. Today uh, we have two fantastic expert guests who will be joining me in but a few minutes. Uh, they are none other than Jerry Hu of Cherry Automobile Hernan. Company Limited, and uh, Nancy Wong of uh, Dongguan King Gold Industry Company Limited, uh, both in uh, somewhat different industries. But of course, uh, shipping and logistics are universal issues. You know, no matter uh, what it is uh, that you actually are making, buying, and or selling, uh, if it is a physical product, at some point you do have to stick it on a ship or a plane or a train and move it from one place to the other. So it's been a, well, a very hot topic for all of our buyer community at Global Sources. And we hope that today's supplier stories uh, live stream will bring you some of the answers that you seek to the burning questions of uh, logistics. To that end, uh, incidentally, uh, I should mention that while you're watching, you can leave comments and questions below this video wherever it is, and we will uh, see that uh, appear in the little panel on the right of my screen. Uh, not instantly, so don't attempt any comic timing, but uh, we do receive all your messages. So at the end, uh, towards the end of our discussion today, we'll uh, see uh, what questions have come in and try to address them if possible. If it's something a little uh, hyper-specific, it's still worth, uh, uh, worth posting, even if we don't deal with it on the live video, uh, we will look at it and our guests will perhaps be able to contact you individually uh, to answer the question by email or what have you. So yes, please do leave your thoughts and comments because that is how we get to know the questions that you really have, not just the ones that we uh, have gleaned from our own research. And of course, uh, in order to get the latest updates on future live streams and other online events from Global Sources, do the old like and subscribe. You can follow us on Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn. All of those channels will give you the alerts when we have something new coming up. All right. Now, that is enough uh, talking from me, I think, in the intro. Uh, most importantly, we need to get on to the subject of uh, who our guests are. So I'm first of all going to bring on uh, Jerry Hu from uh, Cherry Automobile. If I just check my control panel, I think I can make him appear. Let's see. Jerry, good morning. <laughs> How's it going? Hi. Uh, oh, and, uh, I forgot to mention, as you mentioned, we have uh, Bruce also from Cherry Automobile, who's uh, sitting alongside Jerry this morning to help out. Uh, so thanks, Bruce, for coming along as well. But uh, yeah, Jerry, so, um, well, I mean, first of all, we always like to uh, get to know <laughs> the physical surroundings of our guests. So where are you calling us from this morning? Are you in uh, Hernan province somewhere, I assume? Yes, our actually, our company is located in Hernan province, but we say hello from Uhu city, Anhui province, in eastern province in China. Okay, I see. And uh, how's the weather there uh, today? I mean, in Hong Kong, it's what we would call cold, but most people would call <laughs> not cold. Um, how about you guys? <laughs> Actually, we have we, we can have a sunny day, but actually we have a cloudy day. <laughs> actually, is it uh, a little gloomy? Well, that's okay. It means that uh, it's okay to be inside and doing a live stream. You're not missing out on any lovely weather. Uh, well, so uh, as uh, we've mentioned, the company is based uh, in in Hernan Province. But can you yeah. tell us specifically? Uh, what I, th I think the brand name Cherry uh, is going to be yeah. quite well known to many of the viewers. But can you tell us specifically what uh, your company? Um, within the group uh, does? Actually, Cherry has many different, you know, the branch companies. Cherry Holding is our, you know, our mother company. And we, we're just like a, one of the branch companies in Cherry Holding Group. So our company produces different kind of cars, like, you know, traditional cars. And nowadays we produce some cars like hybrid cars, and uh, free electrical cars is the trend. So we now we are put more focus on electrical cars. 
And basically, that's our situation. And we, at the same, same time, we also see a different kind of auto parts. So, and we can also customize our auto parts for our customers. And that's a basic situation of our company. All right, thanks, Jerry. So, yeah, that's going to be uh, well. I've, we'll get to that later, but of course, that transition from uh, fossil fuel vehicles towards hybrid and then electric is means that you're uh, essentially going to be rebuilding a whole supply chain, and, and the logistics of that are, yeah. I would guess, challenging. <laughs> but uh, all right, yeah, let, let's talk about that uh, later on. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to take you off the screen just for a second, Jerry, so we can intro uh, our second guest but at the same screen size. So uh, now I'll bring on, uh, this is Nancy from Dongguan Kingo. Hi, good morning, Nancy, how are you? Good morning, um, hey. I'm fine. What about you? Um, I'm doing doing okay. Um, I've, got, <laughs> I've got to say I'm a little nervous because I, I haven't done one of these live streams for a while and I've sort of forgotten how to do it, but I think it's going to be okay. Um, so, um, well, so where are you calling us from? I guess Dongguan, uh, but maybe not. Yes, I'm calling you from Dongguan. Dongguan is a famous manufacturing city. I think uh, most of the foreigners know this city and it is in the middle of Shenzhen and Guangzhou uh, city. It has very convenient transportation and it also uh, bring the customers convenient transportation to visit us. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, definitely everyone will recognize the city name. I think some people don't know that it's essentially, yeah, in the middle of Shenzhen, also Hong Kong, like you're really close to really close to me, um, yes. and and uh, Guang, you know, Guangzhou. So it's uh, that's right. It's sort of in that triangle of, uh, of very good transport links. Um, if there weren't a pandemic on, I could probably get to your office in you know, maybe a couple of hours, maybe less. Yeah, I don't know. It depends. Depends how uh, how well the connections go. So uh, well, I guess you've got the same weather as me. I won't ask you that question. But could you give us uh, a quick introduction to? your company and what it makes and uh, well and who you sell your products to as well uh yes our company is an oriented is a production oriented enterprise we mainly produce uh customized metal products like uh metal stamping parts cnc machined parts die casting and aluminum extrusion parts and we also have two lines for assembling finished and semi-finished products. Um, we, right now, more than 95% uh, of our sales is from uh, Euro Europe and America. And we are uh, some well-known companies preferred supplier like Amphino France, ABB in Germany, also Actual Life Corporation and Buffab. Austria. Um, even we have met uh, COVID-19, but last year we still create a sales turnover of 10 million RMB, not 10 million US dollars. No, that would be that would be something uh, something a bit different. Still, uh, still pretty good. And uh, so I guess that means that most or maybe all of your orders are custom customized orders for your clients. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that that of course brings its own supply and logistics issues in into play uh, because you can't just stock things um, in in different locations. But actually, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's uh, let's bring Jerry back in and we'll we'll uh, get our uh, discussion um, underway. Hey, Jerry and Bruce. Hi. Uh, so I mean, the first thing to address then is uh, you know we're going to talk about maybe. Uh, what what we're going to look at in the future of, of su supply chain things in, in 2022 and maybe what buyers can do about the issues that are coming up but first we should let, let's ground ourselves basically uh in what what's the current situation in in shipping and logistics you know what what makes right now different from let's say two years ago five years ago in terms of getting products onto into containers and sending them to places um so what well, jerry let's Let's hear your thoughts first. What, how would you describe the situation right now in shipping and logistics? Well, personally, I think the current shipping market is relatively tight because back to two or three years, like you know, 2019, I was in Ningbo. Ningbo, 
and the second largest city in Zhejiang province that is a city near to the sea and it, it has its port so it's very convenient for us to do some um, foreign trade business but I, I remember that years and uh, on the way I back home after I finished my whole year's work and we have the pandemic and it changed a lot of things especially for the industry of foreign trade and the epidemic you know the epidemic really brings us a lot of you know negative things like the logistics is one of the most uh, important things because with the pan epidemic affecting all major ports around the world with varying degrees of congestions resulting in delays and uh, at the same time the high freight rates and the uh, tight slots so it brings so many stressful things for shippers but I think as an ocean freight for water, in fact, as long as the resources you have um, on hand are cheaper than, than others, as long as you have an, enough space on hand, then you have an advantages. But for most um, shippers and uh, small companies and uh, middle companies, we still face a lot of challenges and uh, we actually are very, you know, not, we, we really don't have very, obvious advantages in the market because of their very high logistic fees and their epidemic really brings a lot of troubles to the shipping market because like the delay delay is one of the most important things too because sometimes for example if our goods uh, from china to the us we usually take like you know for example maybe it's not exact number we take about and like 30 days to 45 days but because of the pandemic so it was delayed to like six days to 75 days and it really brings a lot of troubles to our company and our customers so actually that's really changed a lot for these industries that's my yeah, opinion I think so. yeah no well i think well, not just your opinion that's i i think people would, would find it hard to argue with that. And as you mentioned, the, the different amounts of congestion in ports in different parts of the world, uh, the trouble the trouble with, uh, you know, frequent shipping is of course that uh, even if you're, you know, one part of your supply chain doesn't have any problems, it only takes congestion in one, you know, like the famous, the scenes of uh, the ships stacking up at Los Angeles, the port of Los Angeles, uh, and then you know, if those containers are not coming back, then uh, it doesn't matter how free your port is, you, you don't have anything to put it on. But uh, Nancy has, uh, for King Gold, has this experience been uh, similar? Uh, what, what's your, what are your thoughts on, on this? Yes, I, I, our situation is um, very similar. Right now, uh, just like the high freight cost and long shipping time, this is also we met um, in the past for the shipment to uh, America and Canada. It usually takes uh, a month to for arrive. But now, um, last end of last year, my customer told me it takes more than two months for them to get them because of the uh, because of the con congestion in the uh, West Coast, Coast line. And also the freight cost in the past, it normally take about uh, 3,000 US dollars for a 40 foot container. But now it takes more than um, 25,000 US dollars. It is quite a lot increase. Wow. It's <laughs> two times higher. So yeah, that's, that's quite an increase, yeah. <laughs> yes. So some of our customer will hold on for the shipment. They will ask us to uh, keep them in stock. And when they uh, see the freight cost going down and then they will ask us to ship the product. Yeah, oh, I see. So they're, they're kind of just waiting, waiting for the right moment to, to like uh, waiting for a, uh, maybe a plane ticket for a holiday that you want to go on and wait till it gets cheaper. That's very interesting. And I guess not very convenient for you but uh, of course, I get you know if if the customer ne needs you to do that, you probably don't have much choice now. Um, yes. Do you? I mean, do you see that changing over the course of 
of this year you know by you know december 2022 do you think the situation will be very different or are there any other trends or changes that you see coming in the in the near future i think in the next few months maybe the first half of this year the situation will be um, very similar to right now it will work close to the cost of uh, 20,000 US dollars for a 40 foot container. But after that, until uh, most of the countries control the uh, COVID situation, I think the cost will go down. And due to the high cost also, um, we also suggest our customer to uh, bring us a blanket order based on the annual quantity and then they list out what kind of product they need in what time and then we can make the arrangement and we'll also foresee the freight cost when it is the right time for ship the product we will tell them and they will um, take the product i see that's very interesting and i mean jerry um from your point of view in the automotive trade uh, again do you do you have a similar uh, pr similar predictions for 2022. Uh, how, what do you think is going to change over, yeah, let's say the next few months, the next year? Well, actually, uh, um, we see the negative things, negative, you know, elements of the pandemic. But at the same time, we should also be positive to the next three or five years, because you know, this year, I have statistics here I want to show share with all of you. And according to the date, uh, sales data released by Cherry Group for the whole year of 2021, the cumulative sales volume of the group is 900, uh, approximately 900 and uh, 6100 vehicles. We have 692 hundred in domestic domestic market and uh, 269 hundred in overseas market. That's our statistics in, in last year, but this year, 20 and 22. And actually we had a very big mi meeting and tomorrow and our uh, superior leader, he, pre he predicted that in this year, maybe we will see like, you know, 1 million cars. So I think we still need to see some very positive things in during the pandemic. I think the whole market, not only the auto market, and we have different industries like financial sectors, like, you know, and many other different industries. I think we will gradually recover from the epidemic. And for the, so for the next three or five years, we are still very positive. And especially in auto industries, we think it will gradually recover from the pandemic and everything will back to the it, it, back to the, it used to be. So that's my point of view. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Jerry. It's uh, <laughs> nice to have a, an optimistic outlook. Although, as you say, that's, yeah, three, three to five years. But, you know, that's not that's not such a long time, I guess, in the in the scheme of things. So we can take heart. We can take heart in, in that sense. And um, well, so we've I guess we've we've now kind of covered yeah, the situation right now, how how that situation is going to change in future. Um, but of course, the the point of this these streams are to to help out buyers with their their problems. So I thought it would be it would be good if you if I should ask you and if you could share with us. Um, I'd like to ask you about maybe some some common mistakes um, that you've seen buyers make uh, in terms of you know logistics uh, shipping you know arranging shipping and so on um and maybe if you can give some tips to avoid those mistakes especially anything that is uh related to to the the state of shipping right now so you know the old the old practices don't really work i mean as, as nancy has alluded has alluded to the idea of waiting for the right rate on shipping but uh i guess I, i'll throw this one to jerry first what are what are some mistakes you see people making and and, and what's the best way to avoid them I think in uh, just like Tom said, actually, I think is sometimes we need to pay more attention or something like that, because actually we are doing foreign trade business, but sometimes it's, it's not actually as same as, you know, we are doing some scientific research or something professional things like that. But sometimes we 
also need to, you know, to pay more attention on some things that we need to care about. Just like, you know, when you do foreign business, you know, sometimes you were um, transport some dangerous goods. So before our business, we need to talk very carefully with, uh, very cautiously with our customers about the dangerous goods, about the transportation of dangerous goods, like something, some parts, like in our industry, we have some parts that which have, you know, batteries, you know, so when we transport batteries, especially for some, you know, and we transport it through the air, through the air. So it will bring some very potential risks because we have batteries uh, on the planes. And there's some, some other things like oil. If we transport the oil by air, it will also bring the same problems. And we seem to have uh, lost Jerry a little bit. Let's, let's give him a second to unfreeze. Okay. This you see is the danger of live streaming. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes very you get committed. Ah, Jerry, hi. Impact. Can you hear me? Ah, sorry, we lost your we lost uh, your audio hello. for for a couple of seconds. Could you repeat? Uh, you had just finished speaking about uh, transporting oil uh, by plane. Um, could you repeat that that part? Sorry. Yeah. And that's the first thing I'm going to emphasize is that when we transport some very dangerous goods like batteries and oil, we need to pay more attention and need to tell our customers in advance, to let them know that the potential risks that we're going to have when we transport these goods. And another thing is that we shouldn't neglect is the certificates, some relative and some professional certificates because different countries all around the world, of course, have their own laws and regulations of course in china we have our laws because if you wanted to export your goods to china local regulations and china's policy and some laws so that means you need some very professional certificates so the chinese government and the chinese customers will know that the goods from your country is actually is being allowed by laws and actually is going to be acceptable and uh, it's going to be um, okay in in the market so sometimes in our business we find a lot of problems is that we have some customers they don't have some very professional certificates and at the same time when their goods export to china maybe they were uh, in the Ch in China's customers, it will not not let them to go into the Chinese market because you don't have the relative loss, relative certificates. So I think that's one of the crucial things that uh, mm, you know uh, maybe our colleagues and um, our friends and other companies need to pay much more attention to. That's the two things that I'm going to share with all of you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, so, I mean, for one thing, transporting dangerous materials presumably is going to raise the insurance costs for your, your shipment. But uh, yeah, the certifications issue is is one that comes up a lot. And recently on our uh, Ask the Expert feature that we have on globalsources.com, we had a question from someone um, which, uh, if you're watching now, you can go and read the answer to. Um, and it was to do with tra uh, transporting knives into, I think, India. but I, um, of course, the specific country doesn't really matter. That uh, my point is kind of that sometimes things that you consider quite ordinary items, uh, you'll you'll discover actually do need to be um, yeah have a special certificate or need some kind of special clearance. So uh, it's worth it's worth discovering that before your goods arrive at customs and get blocked in a harbour. Um, like even if you think there's the slightest chance that you might need a special certificate. Or in fact, even if you don't, it's worth it's worth checking. Um, you know, all kinds of things are banned in or have restrictions in different markets. You know, cheese or uh, <laughs> different chocolates. Even if it's something that can't explode, it's worth checking. Um, but yeah, so uh, Nancy, how about you? Do you have uh, sort of mistakes or uh, problems that you see buyers encounter, and and what it, what is your advice for them to deal with it? 
Uh, what I will talk about is uh, not only the common mistakes the buyers made, maybe also um, the sellers like us, the factories, uh, will also ignore those mistakes. One of it, one of them is the ISF information. It is the import security failing. This is for shipments go to United States. The, the buyer or the shipping company, they should uh, send the, uh, the electric, electronic uh, declaration data to the uh, United States customs before 24 hours uh, loading the product. This is uh, some common mistake. Maybe the, the US customers who is just start to buy products from China, they usually make. So what we, we need to do is to remember, remember the, those customers um, make them to be prepared before the shipment. And the second one maybe is the, the overweight product. Uh, as we all know that um, the containers has a definite volume, the dimensions, but they will always ignore that they also have a clear requirement about the weight. Um, the 20 foot container, you cannot uh, put products more than um, 70.5 tons and a 40 foot container, you cannot exceed 22 tons. So we as the seller, we should send the, the detailed packing list to the customer and also if any heavy products, we should tell them in advance and not make mistake when the uh, when the pro products shipped out. Right, and right. So, yes, sorry, the last one is the certificate. Uh, for one of our customer, they uh, sent us an order of a finished product. And then the, the product shipped to Korea. And you know, for a electric uh, product, if you ship to Korea, they request a CB certificate. But at the right beginning, the customer didn't know this requirement. So uh, when the products is start, already start production, they tell us, oh, the end customer requests this certificate. What can we do? And then we have to get all the components to be certifi certified for this. So uh, if any new industries, new parts we, we first time to produce, we should uh, check the rules, the, uh, prin the principles in the end, end customer countries and get, know, get everything clarified and let the, the customer know and let our um, factory knows so we can be prepared. All right. Yeah, very nice. I think it's interesting that you both mentioned certificates. Clearly, clearly a pretty common common issue. And uh, yeah, well, one that we uh, uh, Global Sources, we, we kind of get a lot of questions about those as well. So uh, thank you for that. Um, I'm also, yes, it's also good to know that just because you could fit 40 tons of something into a container, uh, maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> That's a good thing to know as well. Uh, let's have a quick check of the comments. Not too much. Um, oh, a question uh, relating to Nancy's uh, about the US declaration. So you mentioned the 24 hours. Is that, that's 24 hours before before loading onto the ship. Is that right? Yes. Not yeah, not 24, 24 hours before arrival. You can't you can't put it on the ship no, and then. <laughs> 24 hours before loading the product. Okay, that's important clarification. All right. Well, I mean that about that about wraps it up um, for this live stream. A nice solid half hour of. Uh, expertise and insight. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, thank you, Nancy. And thank you, Bruce, for being on standby uh, to help as well over at Jerry Automotive. So, um, well, thanks to both of you. I hope we get a chance to speak again in the, the near future. I appreciate you taking the time uh, to, to join us today. And uh, I, uh, I hope that the viewers will uh, get in touch with you to uh, uh, maybe ask you more questions, but hopefully to uh, <laughs> make some orders from your companies as well. So. Thanks to both of you and uh, uh, goodbye for now. All right, well, there we go. Another uh, incisive and informative supplier stories stream there. Thank you very much for watching. 
Now, uh, I should mention that we have the Global Sources Virtual Summit coming up very soon with a packed slate of uh, presentations and workshops and things like that online. Go to globalsources.com to find out more about that. And do follow us on the social medias. Let me pop up the little banner there. That's right, at globalsources.com on more or less everything except for YouTube, where we are the words globalsources.com. Uh, Sorry, at globalsources and globalsources.com spelt out. That's where you will get the alerts and updates about our live content. And sometimes we do non-live videos as well, which are also informative and entertaining. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, I appreciate you stopping by. <laughs> not, that, not that that matters. And uh, I will see you next time. Goodbye.